Let's draw a diagram of the spinal cord to understand how the nervous system works at its most basic level. The nervous system is comprised of the brain, spinal cord, and spinal nerves. And the, the purpose of the nervous system is for the brain to communicate with every single organ, tissue, muscle, and cell. So on my drawing here, in the center, I've drawn a cross section of a spinal cord, with this being the anterior and this being the posterior. On the left side of my drawing, I'm actually going to use the left side to label some basic anatomy, and the right side will be my example. So on my left side, my spinal cord is divided up into two areas. The first is this H-shaped gray matter, and then the entire exterior here is white matter. My gray matter is broken up into three different areas, which are all called horns. This is my dorsal horn of the gray matter, with dorsal being another name for posterior. The lateral horn and the ventral or anterior horn. In the gray matter, I also have my central canal. The purpose of this is to allow CSF or cerebrospinal fluid to flow up and down the center of the spinal cord. The CFF, CSF nourishes the cord, it brings in oxygen and good nutrients and takes away waste product. My white matter is also divided up into a few different areas. This is the dorsal column, lateral column, and ventral column. Just outside the spinal cord, we have the spinal nerves. Before we actually turn the spinal cord into the spinal nerves though, we actually have a ventral, or excuse me, ventral and dorsal spinal nerve root. The dorsal root also has a small structure called the dorsal root ganglion. Then the dorsal and ventral spinal nerve roots meet to form the spinal nerves, which will then carry messages to the rest of the body. Now on the right side of my diagram, I'm going to use an example. My example is that you're sitting in your classroom and you've realized suddenly that it is too hot. So we're going to describe how that brain receives that message. The first step is that the sensory receptors in your skin are constantly collecting data and sending it up to the brain for evaluation. So the sensory receptors are collecting data and sending it up the spinal nerves. Just like traffic, things only flow one direction. So as sensory receptors are sending information about temperature up all of the nerves into the spinal nerve, it's going to go right through the dorsal spinal nerve root, stopping at the dorsal root ganglion. It's going to arrive in the dorsal horn of the gray matter. From the dorsal horn, it's actually going to pop over to the dorsal column. The columns in the white matter of the spinal cord have ascending and descending tracks and that's what allows the messages to actually get up to the brain. So from the dorsal horn, information pops over to the dorsal column where it will travel up to the brain via the sensory ascending tracks. Once the information about the temperature in the room re reaches the brain, the brain will integrate it. 
So the brain has a certain set of values for a comfortable temperature that it likes to keep because the brain's primary goal is to always maintain that homeostasis, that perfect balance. So the brain will evaluate the information, decide if it fits within its perfect range, and if it does not, it needs to send a motor action out to the rest of the body to do something about that. So in this example, the brain has decided it is too hot and we do want to take action. That action is going to be to initiate sweating to cool the body. So the brain will then send a message all the way down. In this example, it's going to go to the lateral white column via the motor descending tracks. From there, it's going to pop over to the lateral column. And I'll explain in just a moment why it goes to the lateral column. From the lateral, or excuse me, the lateral horn of the gray matter. From the lateral horn of the gray matter, this message is then going to go out the ventral spinal nerve root, because that's the way the traffic flows, out the spinal nerve, travel down several other nerves to reach its end goal, which would be glands in the case of sweating. Now cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands are all grouped together in this scenario here. And the only other option we have is skeletal muscle. So in our example of temperature being too hot, the sensory receptors take in information about temperature, send it up all of the nerves to the spinal nerve, all the way around to the dorsal horn, up the sensory ascending tracks to the brain. After the brain integrates it, the brain will send a message down a motor descending tract over to the lateral horn, from the lateral horn, out the ventral root through the spinal nerves, down a bunch of other nerves to the glands to initiate sweating, which will cool the body, allowing it to achieve its goal of homeostasis. Now, I mentioned earlier that we have to go to the lateral horn with this motor descending information. The lateral horn in the cross section of the spinal cord only exists in the thoracic spine and the upper lumbar spine. The reason for that is because those are the nerves that control things, like the cardiac muscle, smooth muscle. A good example of smooth muscle is what's found in the stomach and our glands. So if you think logically about the anatomy of the thoracic and abdominopelvic cavities, and you know where your organs are, it makes sense that those organs would be controlled by the parts of the spine that are closest to them. So the lateral horn only exists in the thoracic and upper lumbar spine, and this is what it controls. Now, had my example been the opposite, we decided it was too cold. We walked outside, it's snowing in Chicago, and we're chilly. The sensory information would have come in exactly the same way to the brain, but the brain's action would be to initiate shivering to warm us up. Shivering is done by the skeletal muscles. So in that example, the brain would have sent information down the motor descending tract to the ventral column, which would then travel to the ventral horn, out the ventral root, out the spinal nerve to a bunch of other nerves and to our skeletal muscle. So if the motor output from the brain is controlling our skeletal muscle, it goes to the ventral horn. If the motor output from the brain is going to change and control cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, or glands, it will come from the lateral horn only found in the thoracic and upper lumbar regions of the spinal cord. So this is a brief example and explanation of the three main functions of the nervous system, sensory input, integration, and motor output using a cross-section of the spinal cord. Thanks.